Welcome to the Art of Quantum Healing, where we speak about trauma, mental health and healing. I am your host, Lisa Nadler, and I'm thrilled to have you come into my energetic field. In this podcast, I will be sharing my own personal experiences to guide, teach and help pave the way. We'll also be welcoming so many other divine souls who have overcome trauma and found happiness, health, wealth and next level abundance through mind, body and soul connection. My mission is to help women high vibe and thrive with inner peace, passion and purpose. On today's episode, we'd like to welcome the beautiful Renee Main. How are you, gorgeous? I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to have you. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. So I'm just going to read a little bit about Renee, um, and she has divinely given me just a snippet into her world because we're just going to progress wherever this flows, which is going to be beautiful. So Renee is an advocate in us remembering We are more than our bad experiences. She has broken the cycle of abuse and now teaches others to inhabit heaven wherever they happen to be standing. That inhabit heaven alone, I was like goosebumps. I was like, inhabit heaven here on earth. How beautiful. Tell me more. (laughs) Just hearing it back, I just get shivers over my body, which is really nice. I've never heard it spoken like that. It's really beautiful. Yeah. For me, what it comes down to, right, is to just, I realised that often, you know, I'm 44 and I've lived a full life (sighs) And, you know, very much when I was 21, I felt like I was 100 years old and lived a 1,000 lives. Um, And then it was, you know, a few years ago, it came to me that I just went, you know what, like we are a byproduct of our life experiences, right? Absolutely. who were we before then? Oh, that's a big question, Renee. Yeah. (laughs) This lifetime or many other ones? Yeah, and that's it, right? Like, so I just, and I feel that so deeply in my soul, like just pondering that question feels huge, right? And it feels infinite. And it could also mean a gazillion different things to us in any moment on any day, right? But having that, just that exploration to explore who she is, who she is, and then to be able to stand in our sovereign power to go, I can inhabit heaven no matter where I'm standing, no matter what is going on around me, because I can cultivate anything I choose Mm. in any moment. So that's what it means for me. And, you know, the world, things, experiences can be what they may. That's that's out of my control, right? I'm not here to try to control life. I'm not here to think that I can barter with the universe and demand what I want. But I will do is I'll listen. Mm. I'll listen first and I will do second. I think the past person you were talking about did the other way around. <laughs> Isn't it amazing when that switched up and you go, Okay, so I'm not actually a I'm, ha- I'm a I'm a soul having a human experience. Yeah, so I need to experience yeah. it all and observe yeah. it all. It's yeah. so it's, we can say that now, but holy shit, what a journey to get to here! Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> mm. absolutely. Love that. Oh, that's juicy. Yeah. So, tell me a bit about your story, beautiful. Mm. So, I have you know I've I was doing some work this week and you know just pondering that question of what happened you know what happened and how is I loved and what didn't I receive were some of the questions that I was pondering this week and so for me what happened was you know I was born into a family where I was loved but I felt like I never belonged. Mm. And, you know, I was never shown what a healthy relationship looked like. 
it was always really toxic and reactive and quite destructive, right? Mm -hmm. And then when my mum left my dad and we moved, we she eventually she moved to a town where she was brought up in the country here in Australia. And, um, and so she eventually found a relationship where she was abused and it was psychological abuse. It was physical abuse and not just on her, but for us as well. Wow. And that raised a lot of questions. That's, That's like, like Renee. How old were you when you were? Um, uh, maybe 14, mm. I'll so say. Still yeah. Still up. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm in a new town, in a new school, finding my feet as a teenager, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, which is and confusing so, enough. Which is confusing enough. Yeah. 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 But also not, you know, have, not being with most of my family. So I was just with my mom and my brother and it was just us. So we went from a family of seven down to a family of three, which was a huge adjustment looking back, you know, and it's not until the hindsight where you go, wow, wow, right? So because it, when you're in it, you're in it and you're just, and it's all just happening around you and you're just fumbling your way through, right? Mm -hmm. And so... But mum met this guy and, um, yeah, he was abusive and she was with him for quite a few years. And um, when I was 17 and after I finished year 12, I couldn't wait to get out of there. And, um, you know, for numerous reasons. But I remember distinctly having this feeling as I was the one who would stop the fights. I was the one who pleaded hit me, don't hit them, Yeah. hit me. That's big. I'd prefer, yeah, like I'd prefer to be hit the one to be beaten and to be hit and to be abused mm -hmm. rather than watch, watch it. the others, my family go through it. And um, but it was something that was never spoken about either. So none of my friends knew, mm -hmm. none of my mum's family, uh, well, none of her family knew, like, None of mum's friends knew. No one knew. It wasn't even discussed in our house between the three of us. Oh, so you you and your other siblings didn't even talk about it? Your mum didn't, didn't talk about it? Didn't even talk about it. Like it was oh, just. So there was no processing whatsoever. No. Holy shit, that's a lot no. to contain. Whew. None. Like nothing to process. The only thing that was like going through her head is like, this is fucked up, yeah. right? And I remember thinking, you know, mum, like it's one thing for you to allow yourself to go through this, but how mm. do you allow your children to go through this? And to witness it. And, yeah, witness it, be a part of it, for me to be the person to go, I'm a child and I'm the one going to two adults. This is not okay. Yeah. This is not okay. None of this is okay. And so I was just went, I can't be this person anymore, right? So there was this moment where I went, <gasps> but I'm the person that stops it. If I leave, what? mm. what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And for a 14 and to 17 year old to have that weight on your shoulders, is yeah. like, oh my God, that's, that's just yeah. soul destroying. Yeah. So. Mm. I really led this double life and, you know, I got to adapt to behaviour really well, yeah. you know. I could see it in his eyes when he was about to flick and get aggressive, you know. I could see it. I could just see it all, how mum reacted and when they made up and when they, like, fought. So I, I knew the play. I could see it. Yeah. And, um, you know, so then when I moved... And um, I was 17 and moved to Alice Springs, which is like the centre of Australia. And one of my sisters lived there and she was like, I was seven, 17 and she was 19, maybe 20. Um, and so, yeah, so I moved with her, got a job and eventually met a guy and fell into the exact same situation as what my mum had. 
as much as I said, I will never, ever be like her. I will never, ever. I ref- I was like, it was my mantra. I will not be like my mum. I will not be like my mum. And guess what? I was my mum. <laughs> the universe doesn't understand that middle bloody word. And we, we yeah. I, I did exactly the same. I look back now and I lived my mum's life right down to I snapped my Achilles the same time she did. I got abused pretty much the same time she is. It's just... It's incredible how we just keep the generational patterns. Amazing. Just keep, they just keep going no matter what, even though you say it. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So there's, a, there's a bigger play, right? Yeah. You know, there's a bigger play. There's a bigger divine order. There's a bigger reason that is beyond us that it's really hard to understand when you're in it. When you're in it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, true because so you've also got all the emotions and everything happen around you. And it's like, it, it's it's almost like when you take yourself out and you look back, it's like you look at a film that was happening and you're one of these characters that has to keep changing to fit into, especially when you're around abuse and you're around the emotions that are happening. And also the other thing is your nervous system must have been on high alert. Like it must have been looking for what was going to happen. Instead of being a kid enjoying life and having fun and everything, you're constantly, your nervous system is just twisted and turned and looking for that alert, 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 alert. It's fucking exhausting. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely exhausting. And But here's the thing, the funny thing about when you're in it and you're in that is when you're in it, you don't even realise, right? You don't even realise. You don't realise what's actually your body is doing what your nervous system is doing what's playing out like it's so hard to think about this life beyond this one yeah so it messes with your head like so much so it's really hard to you know it's really hard to just separate yourself Mm. from it just Mm. to zoom out a little bit to go okay like what do I have to do here right like how do I get out of this you know so it's not as simple as why does she not leave like just leave you know it's it's not it's not about that it's it's much harder than that people say well why don't you just get out uh uh, hello, have you? And it's really funny because I remember, um, well, not funny, but it's really interesting. I should say, I remember when I was one of the times I was sexually abused, and the man came into my room. And you know, when you're watching a TV and you're like, just scream, you stupid bitch, just scream, yeah, so you'll come and help you. What is wrong with you? <laughs> that it was like, yeah, you can't, you just yeah. you don't know how you're going to react in a certain upset. And you're right, when you are in it. It is just so different from anything else. You just, you can't explain it, right? So how do you you get out of it? You you left, sorry, your marriage? Yeah, so it's, um, yeah, so I ended up, you know, and just like to add into that as well is, you know, you've got to remember that if they're saying, if you leave, I will kill you, you know. If you leave, I will kill myself. Yeah. So there's a whole, there's more dynamics, right? There's more pieces to the puzzle that is unfolding. And so what I do want to say is that, you know, it's, it's one step and it's one action, right? And you might leave and then you might get back together and then you might leave and then you might get back together. Yeah. And then there'll be one moment where you just go, I cannot do this anymore. Mm. I, I cannot do this anymore. And so for me, that's what it looks like, right? So I didn't have a plan. A lot of people will say you have to plan it, you have to do this. And this. Really? I didn't, yeah, yeah, I didn't do that. And, I mean, granted, like it was just me, I didn't have kids, you know, with him or anything else. So, you know, so in many ways it was probably perhaps easier. I don't know. But, you know, so I remember once where I'd nearly died. He, ne- he like, he nearly killed me. He nearly strangled me to death. And it was just a divine intervention that stopped that from happening. And, and, um, yes. and I wrote, yeah, and when he, when he left, um, after I'd, you know, like cried and in the fetal position and rocked and everything else. And the next day I wrote down the words, I have to break the cycle and stop the war because I've had enough. 
Yeah. Ooh, I got goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. I've and so that. I knew it. I knew it. But then I still went back. Mm. And then we moved. And because we were living together and and um and that and then he just went one day and I went, oh, it's now or never. Like I've got an opportunity right now. And we didn't even have a fight. He wasn't even abusive so or what, anything. The fight, wow. Yeah. And so it just I it, I can't even explain it. Like it doesn't make any logical sense, yeah. right? And I called up my sister and I said, can you come pick me up? I said, I have to leave. Did so I left. Did anybody else know what was yeah. going on? Did she know? Did anybody else? Or was it the same as your mum? So, that- yeah, no one knew. I My other sister, I told her what he'd done, mm. but it was like, okay, like she was in her own toxic relationship at the yeah. time so of yeah she yeah. was not she, yeah 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 so so she didn't I guess have the capacity to understand or to support me um in the way that I needed she was on her um, own at journey. the time yeah she was on her own journey yeah. and um so but you know my sister here is like you know she is you know she was the one that always had her shit together and all her ducks in a row and all the things and so she came and got me and um, and I left, like, the household full of furniture. I left all my money. I literally left with <laughs> a small suitcase that I had so, that I saved up for when I was 10 years old and I was an Avon lady. So oh. this little, this little <laughs> suitcase and I was out. And, and I was like, brilliant. Or your toxicness yep. behind you. So that, that was the day yep. that you put you first. That was the day when I said I vow to myself I will never, ever let this happen again, yep. ever. And I didn't. And I never shed a tear. I didn't. I back. walked away. I walked away. So I decided in that moment it was never going to happen again. However, the healing didn't come and didn't present itself until maybe five years later. Isn't it amazing how that happens? So you just put it completely beside you and you just needed to focus and get on with your life. That was all that mattered. One step in front of the other. Yeah. 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 It was just survival, right? Like, so it was, okay, this is what I have to do. I just had to figure out what I was doing in the world Mm. to just get through the day, right, to figure out who I was without having to worry about whether my partner had had a good day or a bad day, whether someone had pissed him off and I was going to pay, whether he was intoxicated and he was going to, like, lose his shit, you know. Mm. Like, it was just who am I without that? Because by now it's been going on for years, right? It's all that I know. Mm, this double life Mm. yeah where I go to work I've got this big smile on my face and I'm okay and I'm doing really well like I'm managing a business and I'm managing two businesses at once and I'm doing this over here and you know doing all of these fabulous things and no one knows yeah all the shadows yeah 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 Yeah. so for a long time it was oh sorry darling no that's right yeah so for a long time it was just you know it was just reiterating life again and just going okay like basics Mm. like how do I get to work and how do I get home and that's all I have to focus on because I left everything else behind (laughs) I know for me when when I was going into that place and and I put all my different masks on and I had everything was because I had so much blame shame and guilt that I was in the position I was in. And like you, like, and like so many of us, and like most of us, we're strong people. How the fuck do we get into this situation? You know, you just, you can't comprehend what's actually happening around you to who the person that you know are inside you. And you're a loving, huge heart of soul. And you're like, how did I yeah. get here? What, how did this happen? I don't understand. Yeah. But getting out of it is completely different. It's just. Completely different. 
it makes no logical sense. And that's the hardest thing is it makes no logical sense. But it's, you know, for me now, it's like, oh, it taught me so much about myself. And that, you know, for me, it was that realization where, you know what, I was 21 and I felt like I lived a thousand lives, you know, but the brutal reality was, I don't know who I hated more, them for doing it to me or me for allowing it to happen. That's and I was so yeah. angry. I was so angry. And no one teaches us what to do with that anger, at that anger, because we've watched people abuse us for so many years. Yeah. So we know what anger does, yet we're just as angry. So what is it? What, what do I become when yeah. I let this out? That's do so I become true. them? Yep. Do I become the monster? What do I do with that? And that My eats person. away at your soul. Yeah, oh, I love that. Okay, my crown shark is going crazy right now. <laughs> I was like, this all stuff's coming in. <laughs> it's true. How do you process it? And then, of course, you're too busy bidding yourself up for why you're there, and then you don't actually know how to get rid of it. And so you store it in your body, yeah. and then it just, until that day you explode. Was there a day you exploded? There was, hmm, no. Like, I didn't explode. Mm. And for me, it was like this slow relay, like this pressure cooker, like where you sp- uh. you slowly like let off the thing. Oh. So it wasn't like this big bang. Yeah. I didn't cry for many, many years, like so long. But what I did do, <laughs> yeah, it would have been a pressure so, cooker, right? Far it out. was a pressure cooker, absolutely, absolutely. But what I did do was a friend handed me a book once and I used to work on cruise liners, so, um, and that was what I wanted to do, right? I wanted to escape where no one knew me and where I was. I wanted to be free. And so I went and worked on cruise liners for two years and a friend was, um, a friend handed me a book and she said, just open it to a page. So I went, all right. And so I did that. And I was like, I just started crying. Oh. And I was like, oh my goodness. Like, what is this book? Like, what? Is this book? <laughs> what are you doing to me? <laughs> I was like, how did this? Because I was like, she's, she's talking to me. Like, this is me. How does she know this about me? And it was Louise Hayes, oh, You Can Louise. Heal Your Life. That was my book. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's so beautiful. that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was from there that then the healing began and where I really started to do the work on myself. Mm-hmm. And from there I devoured every single self-help book I could get my hands on. <laughs> yeah, one of those like, The Secret was my yeah. next one, of course, The Secret. Oh, oh, what's all this? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And how long was that? Um, how old were you when, when the, the boiling pot finally went? Oh. That I was probably maybe 22. No, maybe yeah, oh, yeah, probably about 22, maybe 23, something like that. Oh, so young. Yeah, early 20s. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. So young, so young. And you young. didn't have a partner between then? You From when you left, you didn't have, a, like, a serious partner or anything that was, like, a no-go zone? Yeah. No, so, huh? well, <laughs> I did meet someone. <laughs> I like that laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Funny story. <laughs> I met someone, um, yeah, when I was, just kind of finding my feet and I didn't want anyone I was like I do not want to meet anyone I just want to work I want to study and then I want to go work on cruise ships yeah like I just want to leave the world behind (laughs) (laughs) no attachments yeah no attachments and I met someone and I was just like can we just be friends with benefits and he was like yeah. Yes. Like, oh, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. I just want to. Getting look at you. Of course yes. I do. Is that a trick question? <laughs> I was like, I, can we just be friends with benefits? Like, can we just have fun? Because 
I'm out of here yeah. in eight months' time. And I was counting down. And he was like, yeah. And he just got out of this long relationship that was, you know, his own thing and toxic in its own way. Yeah. So we were like, hell yeah. Like, <laughs> this is so great. That's the fuck. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, we just fell in love. I love, of course you did. And so, but I said, I, I have to go. Good on you. I have to go. I said, I can't not do this. And um, wow. yeah, it would have and been a so, big decision. Oh, it was a massive decision. But did it restore it your massive. faith that you actually could love in a in a, yeah. in a non toxic? Like he must have been yeah. so good for you. He taught me like safety. Yeah, you know, and oh, he, yeah, good like safety. No matter what I said. No matter what I do, like he would never hit me. Mm. I got sexually assaulted by someone else when we first started hanging out and dating. Mm. And I was scared to tell him Mm. because I thought that he would be abusive towards me and he would get angry at me to be like, it's your fault. And so I was like, so again, my nervous system contracted and I went into trauma and I was like, oh, my God. God, like I can't say anything. I'm gonna ruin this good thing. This yeah. good man. And I ended up telling him, and he was like amazing. And you know, he's like, it's not your fault. Like, how is it your fault? You know? And so wow. yeah. That's so so beautiful. You know, yeah, oh. it it was. So, you know, so he's he he showed me safety. He showed me that that men can be really supportive. Yeah. And he said to me, go, go. I think he might have even paid for my flight, actually, because I had to fly to London to get on the ship. So yeah. I think he actually paid for my So He was like, go, go do your thing. Yeah. Go do whatever you have to do. And, um, and I did, you know. And so, yeah, so 22 and a half years later, we're still together. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. No way. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, that if you love something, set it free. If it comes back, it is yours. If it doesn't, it never yeah. will. I love that. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's beautiful. Yeah. So I went wow. and so I went and did an eight-month contract and then I come back and then I said, I'm oh. actually going back out again. Oh. I'm going back out to sea again. I want to do another contract. And so I went and did another contract. And then I come home and then I said, actually, don't know where I'm going with my life. So I'm just going to move to Sydney to figure out what I want, where I want to go. And were you in contact that whole time that you were? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So So we're still together. We're still together. I love that. Yeah, we're still together. But then when I come home, I said, let's break up. Like I need to just figure out. Because what happens is, like, you know, is people are there and people say, people try to influence your decision, you know. Mm -hmm. You should go do this and go be with him. And then, you know, I had friends going, come and do another contract. And then I was like, there there was this five-star spa getting built in the Bahamas. And then so it was like, come and work here. That would have been (laughs) I thought about it for about two seconds, <laughs> you know. And so, but I went, uh, whatever decision I decide, I want to make it for myself. So how I did you make it the noise? Myself. How did you decide that I need to make this from my container? from Because no, that's what happens to a lot of people. They have so much. Yeah. Money. Everyone's got an opinion. And it's like, how did you connect yeah. to your higher self and make that decision? Yeah. So for me, it meant moving to Sydney yeah. and where I knew no one, I didn't want to know anyone, I just could work, I could go home, I could meditate, I could go for a walk, I could continue reading and devouring my books. Mm. And by this stage, I was like, so at this stage, like my favourite book was um, Celestine Prophecy. So I was learning the universal laws. Yeah, that unlocks a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. A lot. And so for me, I delved into the universal laws, right? And so still today, I work a lot. I teach the universal laws because it is the foundation 
foundation, if we can master the universal laws, we will alter our reality forever. And that is how we inhabit heaven no matter where we are standing. It's through the universal laws. Most people think there's one or two universal laws. There's about 12 or 13, isn't there? Yeah, there's look, there's several. There's so what I here's the thing, right? And here's the thing with spirituality, in my opinion. I've got probably a bit of a like a, a different perspective. Because I think now what's happened is there's been so many spiritual teachers that a lot of that a lot of the work has been diluted. Really? Right? No. No. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know, right? It's been agitated and spun around and yeah, yeah. 100 percent Yeah. Yeah, so money ties. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. And like, dare I say, whitewashed. Absolutely. Right. Yep. So we don't honor the origin, right? So what we do then is so there's heaps of universal laws. So, like, Bob Proctor has made heaps of universal laws, right? However, if you span back to the origin which is what I like to do is I stick with the origin Thank so you. if you stick to the hermetic laws yeah yeah um then you go there's three immutable laws right so three laws that are unchangeable they will never ever change they will always be in existence cannot will not change and then we have mutable laws Right. So they're the ones that are designed to change. Now, there's lots of mutable laws. However, the hermetic laws, there are seven in existence. Just like seven chakras. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yes. (laughs) So, yeah. So what it's designed to do, right? And so here's what most people don't understand with the hermetic laws, the universal laws, is They'll get to know the mutable laws. They are designed to change, right? We are designed to move beyond them. And most people, (laughs) yeah, yeah. And so most people swim around in the universal, in the mutable universal laws, right? So we get caught up in masculine and feminine and gender and the law of gender and the law of truth and the law of polarity. And let's use this polarity teaching. And, you know, so, so there's a whole, like the law of rhythm, the pendulum and, you know, all of these things, right? So we get swept up into that. They stay in there. However, they're designed for us to move through them, to evolve through them. So, but what happens is we use this excavation that becomes this endless cycle. I've always got something to heal. There's always something to heal. What's Mm -hmm. happening is we're constantly healing and we're never actually moving forward. Yes, yes. And And that is is why. In that spiritual trap, that that spiritual, and it's like anything else. When you get stuck in one place for too long, it's not, it's not normal. You're supposed to be. That's right. right. Yeah, exactly. Same I call it the Spiritual Olympics. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's a yeah. fucking Olympics, isn't it? Yeah. You're lifting yeah. yourself up. One minute you're resting. <laughs> yeah. So true. Yeah. yeah. It's the yeah. same as when people say, oh, I'm a healer. No, you're not. No, you're not. Yeah. We heal ourselves. You're the channel to help and stand and guide and hold me. End of story. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? And then you won't move through it because if you're constantly looking for someone to heal you and you're not healing yourself and you did it right from when you were young, you were like, I took a step back and went, okay, so how am I going to, what's actually happening here? And you actually started your own healing journey right from back then. And look at the expansion, the evolution. So beautiful. I I, I agree, Renee, 100% agree. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and that's, it's it's this constant excavation of healing and it's this you know where it's this outsourcing of power right is because we always need someone else this past life regression this da 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 this imprint da, 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 da. like it's just this ongoing thing yeah. of where we're constantly outsourcing our power because yeah. we want to be somewhere else other than what we are which there's nowhere to be. There's nothing to obtain. In the richness of now, we do not yearn for anything. Everything that we need is within us. We need for nothing. However, our humanness is designed 
to think that we want we need to get to this thing because we're not where we where we think that we should be what you know and lack of that's right exactly <laughs> even with spirituality right the yeah. thing with spirituality is it just sounds really beautiful you know it's wrapped up in pretty language right it's not a beautiful experience going through it all far out <laughs> no and that's it so so much of the spirituality yeah. you know i made a post the other day you know so unless we understand our dark feminine we cannot understand the feminine yes right it's true unless we understand and our shadow and dance with our shadow and understand that it's actually not a bad thing it is a beautiful thing right and unless we try to like you know we're constantly try to just be this person that we're not pry ourselves away for who we really are instead of just remembering who we are because we're always trying to get to that golden light of, oh, I'm finally there on the end. You're never going to fucking get there. You're never going to get there. This is all part of the okay. human experience that we signed our contract. Yeah. We said, okay, let's do this. Why, Absolutely. why I signed up right now, I don't know. But <laughs> yeah. And that's it. Also, it's the trust, right? It's the trust. Yeah. And when we are there, one could say, then we're dead, right? But then if we're eternal souls. Then how can we be dead? then how can we be dead? Mm. And then if we actually then have nothing to learn in earth school, guess what? We're just energy, right? So then we come back to remembering that we are but a vibration. Yeah. Everything is just an energy. Yeah, 100%. Which is the we are all of part of this thread. Yeah. 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 So yeah. true. So would you say that the law of attraction stuff is the most powerful thing that you've used for your healing? <laughs> no. No. But it's no it's an intricate part of it. <laughs> I, you know what? Okay. Whew. I want to say no. So the law of attraction, I'm going to say I loved it for a really long time. But now I've got to call bullshit on it. Evolution. Evolution. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you know, it's, again, it's been watered down from the hermetic laws, Yeah. right? So yeah. they've been they've been watered down and diluted and deconstructed into teaching people, hey, you can think yourself into a reality, Yeah. right? However, without understanding the law of mentalism, the law of correspondence and the law of vibration, you cannot fully understand the law of attraction, right? So the law of attraction is telling us that, hey, I can make God my bitch. I can make the universe my bitch. I can demand and barter with you, God, to go, this is what I want. Give it to me. And look, I have all these trinkets and superstitions and things that tell me that I'm worthy. Yeah. Right? But we're breaking the law. Yeah. We're breaking the universal laws when we do that. So what we say is like, so it's come back to feeling, right? Come back to feeling. And what I'll say is, you know, I say to my interns is we become a dominatrix of our lives and a submissive to the universe. Mm -hmm. So we listen first. We understand that we're energy first. We're physical second. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We co-create our reality. Right? We choose, but we do not dictate. We cannot command because I'm pretty sure God doesn't care how many crystals we have. <laughs> Are you sure? Right? God doesn't see stuff as... Vagina. Yeah, exactly. Like I can put a crystal up my snatch and think that I'm God. Absolutely, you're cleansed. You're pure. I am cleansed. I am healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well done, Renee. <laughs> yeah. I am so, ready. It's so true. I've got this story that I share about this person who wants this big red flash car and they keep getting a red bike put on the outside of the house, but they don't want it. They keep wanting this red bike. And that's exactly what it is. They're trying to get this bigger, brighter thing when in fact what they need right now is the red fucking bike. So be yeah, grateful, right. use it and understand it as you as yeah. you go keep going with on your journey. Yeah. So exactly. true. Here's the thing, right? One of my favorite quotes from A Course in Miracles mm. is 
the miracle arrives at the point of which it can be received. Mm. Right? So if we are vibing at a red bicycle level. That's what you're going to get. we're going to get. That's what we're going to get. And that's all you can hold. Yeah. 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 So a lot of things come into play here, right? Is you go, okay, like this is a feeling state, right? Okay, I can cultivate any feeling that I want. Mm. I have to know that fear is not my enemy. Fear is my ally. Yeah. It's here for me to just teach me more about myself, right? Yeah. I'm here to be able to just love myself more and more and more and know that I have nothing to gain and nothing to get. Mm. I am I here really in my sovereignty. Because right. you're taken care of. So why we are you always this taking big care shiny of. thing? I, know. I think this is why right now I cannot at the moment even look at Facebook. It makes me physically sick and I'm going to be honest. I, I, I just see the same. And I when I did my two, uh, two week dieta with uh, Not Our Eye, um, and I basically sat and stared at a ceiling and, and drank the tea. It was beautiful. I love plant medicine. Um, it, it, that was one of the big things that came. I'm sick and tired of seeing, and I was doing it myself. That's probably why it was a trigger, regurgitating everybody else's stuff and everybody saying the same, saying, oh, let's make some money out of an abundance program. Let's make some money out of uh, manifesting. It's just like oh, yeah. TikTok. So it's getting to yeah. a stage where it's just, it is getting a little bit ridiculous. And you're right. Yeah. Go back to the ancient wisdom. I'm all about the ancient wisdom. Yeah. And that's what you're like. It's, it, it's, it's there for a reason, right? It's been around for over 7,000 years for a reason, you know, yeah. and honoring that actually shows more reverence to yourself and the teachers rather than thinking, I have to own this and make it my own. But really, you're actually being completely disrespectful. And you're not honoring your lineage of your work. And so, therefore, guess what? You're breaking the law because there's only one of us here. Yeah. Right? We are all of the one mind. Yeah. You know, so I think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of outsourcing of power. There's a lot of bullshit that happens in this industry all because we want to make it sexy we want to make it easy we want to make it sellable right and it's like yeah you can do this so we feel like we need to dumb it down right and people but guess what it sells guess why people want easy people want a quick fix people want to go see a psychic because tell me what to do tell me how to fix my problems because i feel broken but having the hard conversation of myself going you are not broken right you are not broken there is nothing to heal but all you need to do is have a fucking honest conversation with yourself which is what people don't want to do because they want somebody else to tell them what to do exactly because it is a harsh yes. reality and you have to sit in the discomfort of your own bullshit and be okay with it and that's not easy that and takes courage yourself. it does it takes massive yeah. coverage yeah it yeah. takes some you know it takes some spiritual steel I love that right? spiritual steel. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. It's changing our perception around what pain is, right? You know, and that's what I talk about the hedonistic way. And, you know, for me, like that pleasure point is the glue, right? You know, it's the glue to go, we can be holy and we can be human, and but we forgot our pleasure. We forgot what hedonism is, right? It's the glue that makes it all sustainable, right? Mm. Because mm. when we have pleasure and hedonism floating through our veins, it brings us to the present moment, right? And when we're in the present moment, that is all that matters, our right? And it, high. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This so there's no spiritual kink. high, there's no spiritual low. Sorry. Is yeah. this the semantic kink? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. I was going to ask you about that. I was, I was really intrigued. So this yeah, is yeah. So this is so part the of the work you do, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yeah. So my podcast is called The Hedonistic Way because this is when I really realised that in my spiritual journey that 
nothing is sustainable. I was hustling and I was hustling hard and I was a spiritual bad ass, right? Mm. I was doing all the things. And then I went to show up one day and I had nothing, nothing. Like nothing would come out. Nothing would come out. <laughs> nothing. And so. Involved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so no meditation. There was no visualization. There was no spiritual tools that could get me out of this. And one thing that come out of it was pleasure. Mm. So I had this voice to say, "You, where's the pleasure? Where's the pleasure? So I just began to explore what pleasure meant for me. Yeah. Right. What is pleasure? And then I realized if it doesn't bring us pleasure, it's not sustainable. It is not sustainable. And we have forgotten that what pleasure is, right, is because Mm -hmm. we're hustling. We're busy. We want to be successful. Oh, we need to be all gratitude and joy, right? Yeah. We need to be out here doing this thing. But guess what? We need to be in touch with our wombs. We need to be in touch with our sex. We need to be in touch. Literally. All of who we are. Yeah, yeah, literally, absolutely. (laughs) And come back to that sacred union, right? You know, and so that then birthed the hedonistic way. And then from there, somatic kink was born is because I I studied intuition and I studied the science of intuition yeah. and so in intuitive intelligence. And then there was this moment where I will, we were in the tapping module, the EFT module. Love tapping. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, so I do intuitive tapping and our teacher, Angelique Adams, is um, she mentioned secondary gain and I went, oh, hang on, this means something right and so I went oh and so it was you know the module finished and everything and so but I'd already started my journey with embodiment right I'd already started my journey with sexuality and um you know and neo-tantra and understanding tantra and non-dualism and all of these things but this secondary game got me and I went hang on a minute so what I what so then I channeled this and I just experimented with a friend because I said I've I've got this idea and what is this so anyway so what it is is so we have a fear right so everyone has fears right so we identify our fear and we turn the fear into love right so we use fear as an ally however there is a part of us that gets off on this fear there's a secondary gain Mm. right so Mm. this is where the kink is right so everyone has a kink profile everyone no one is exempt from having a kink profile yeah but once you know your kink profile it's like human design it's like a gene cheat gene keys cut like so we do kink evaluations and i will tell you exactly where you're in your false power exactly where you're in your power and what's wanting to come through, right? What's wanting to be birthed in you. Find me out. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's that. amazing. Yeah. It's so cool. And But so because what happens is because it happens in the body, right? Yeah. Because our in kinks are stored mm. in the body. Our bodies are like a library, an mm-hmm. Akashic totally. record. Yep. It remembers, right? Our wombs yep. are our, it's our own Akashic record, right? So we carry everything here. So somatic kink is meeting that kink, right? So it's that coming, becoming familiar with what am I getting off on, mm. right? What am I getting off on? This driver. is giving me something. Yeah, that's right. It's the right. driver. So yeah. that's the thing that you keep on going back to, it keeps on coming into your reality because there's a part of you that's getting off on it. Yeah, yeah. Right? I've got lots of so, oh, there are numerous, <laughs> numerous drivers, right? So yeah. for me, coming back into like the drama of abuse, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, what did I, what did I gain from that, mm. right? So for me, I had to sit in in the, yeah, (laughs) holy shit, it does, right? So then I went, oh crap, there's a part of me that got off on the drama. Yeah, 
there's a part of me that got off on the drama. There was a part of me that I wanted to be like the exception to the rule. Like I wanted to be the person that went, oh, like that poor Renee, like this is what happened to her. Yeah. She was like, I wanted it to be, I got off on it being hard. Yep. I did. I used to get sick because I got sympathy and I got help. Yes. I didn't get it when I was young. So I got sick yeah. all the time. Always sick. Yeah. So okay. this is, mm. yep. There's a, and it, it happens completely unconsciously, right? Yep. It is completely, totally. it's within our unconscious. Yep. And so, it, and in many ways, it's a trauma response, right? Yep. Yep. It's a skill that we adapted to get what we needed with mm. what the tools that we had at the time. However, it comes apart in your journey where you go, okay, yes, I acquired this skill set that got me through this 10, 20, 30 years ago. However, it is now po- problematic in my life. Mm. It no longer serves me now. Yeah. 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 Totally. So, and that's really what the somatic kink is, oh, is right. identifying these kinks in the body and then we go through a beautiful process that where we work on the five bodies to release it from what I call the erotic body which is really the physical body the mental body the energy body the emotional body the spirit body Mm -hmm. so we remove it and transmute it from every single body so it becomes an in-body experience so we create a new reality which is awesome yeah. We won't create it from pleasure, not from pain. That's right. So we learn how to transcend mm. through pleasure. Yep. Right. So because our perception of what is pleasure and what is pain is completely subjective, right? That's a human-made experience. Yep. We've been conditioned into this is good, this is bad. Yep. Right? You're the pleasure of pain, they is, say. Yeah. 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 So this, yeah. you know, so and in terms of kink, right? So if everyone has a kink profile, right? So what most people go, oh, that's freaky, and that's I don't get why they do that, and why do they want to dress up as a baby, or like all of these things, right? It feels really weird. Yeah. However, if you think of kink, kink is just what is outside we think is socially acceptable. Mm. That's what kink is. Like it's literally, so that's what kink acceptable. Is. Yeah. Who, and so it's yeah. like saying those it's roles. like saying normal, normal, yeah. right? Who, like, who, normal. Determines, who determines what's normal? That's- like normal is so infinite, and this is what kink is. However, most people don't realize. So a kink, so how kinks are born is there. It's where there's a time period in your life. So a really good example of that is, uh, let's say a toddler right a toddler who is sitting by their mum's feet yeah right so some of their fondest memories is them playing with their toys in front of them as a child yeah sitting by their mother's feet where they felt happy and safe yeah a kink is born because that is a happy moment and then a foot fetish is created oh so it's like because something oh. because they identify an altered state of consciousness Speed with a pu- like a blissful experience with feet oh. yeah i'm ticking through my I've got tick, 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 tick. yeah yeah so we yeah. all have these right so that is you know that's just and, and that's just normal. one small little kick it's normal it's comforting for you it's happy for you it's pleasure for you yeah, so yeah. Guys, yeah. yeah yeah so it's it's normal right and so we all have these different kinks that are just formed all throughout our lives and of course that can sometimes you know it can be okay in this moment this happened and I got attention mm. right mm-hmm. I got attention in this moment so oh hello that felt good there's another kink yeah, yeah. right move a little bit further yeah and, oh hang on a minute 
here's another one. So it just happens. It just keeps happening and happening and happening. It's, it's almost like happening. you're creating a whole new D the cellular DNA structure of reactions. It's like. Yes. Yeah. That's, it's, that's exactly what happens. Mm. That's exactly what happens. And so, and because it's all happening unconsciously and because there's such a taboo around sex and around kink. So it's like, if you want to do this, you're filled with shame and yeah. you go do it in like this dark seedy corner. Mm. Mm. However, suppressing yourself, suppressing yourself, the shame, the yep. guilt, which is more trauma right? inside you. Which oh, is God. More, trauma and more trauma and more oh. trauma, right? Yeah. And it is inside every single so You look at all these priests, right? Mm. Like it is a natural desire to want to fuck. We are primal yep. animals. Yep. We are primal beings. Yep. We have a clitoris for no other purpose but for pleasure. Yeah. Right? So why do we not like, use it? Why do you think it's why? bad? Talk about it and uh, experience it. Yeah, you know, it. like we're yeah. animals. You look in the wild, like I'm, like where I am now, like it's, like the, the birds are shagging all over the shop, right? Like, <laughs> like you bastards. <laughs> And there's no like, there's no like, who's watching? Going, oh, there's no rude. what's going on. Yeah, like it's what, what's, what's, judging like, the other bird, and then they no. have a threesome, and it's okay. Yeah, but, like, <laughs> but it's it right. just <laughs> it happens, right? But yeah. we as humans have become so domesticated, so PC, that so we're like caged animals, forgetting that we are actually wild. Why? Because you can't be wild because if you're wild, it means ugly, messy, unkept and untamed. And <gasps> we can't be those things, not as a woman, or a slut. not as a lady. Yeah, yeah. But we need to own our slut, yeah. right? Yeah. We need to own our dominatrix. Yeah. We need to own our whore, right? Yeah. Because these are human-made concepts mm. that we've been taught that's bad, that's all a part of the patriarch. You know, so we're just fed into this machine and that, makes that tells you, us tells you what to do. Yeah, to be, yeah, to, yeah. to feel, to, to embody. Yeah, everything. yeah. Ooh, so we're buying that's into a whole this other group. podcast system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so zooming out. Yes. Zooming out is so important. Remembering yeah. that we are more than this body right yep. we are so much more and what you're feeling right now matters hey, yes. you do not to you do not need to be anywhere else yeah. Yeah. feel be completely unafraid to feel how you're feeling your feelings are valid your feelings are matter they are a part of your journey and we need to honor them and not run away from them yeah, and remembering hard. that we're hard hard but it does become easier Mm. And it's just a being muscle. Seen. We can become really practiced. Yeah. And being seen is a, is a hard thing for a lot of people, especially when you've had trauma, because you don't want to be seen. You want to hide, put that mask yeah. on and bury yourself in the nothingness. It's a whole yeah. part of the journey. It's, it's a whole, as you said, it's an evolution. It's an opening up and just allowing yourself yeah. to be the observer. It's huge. Yeah. And being okay with being the observer and what comes through. And the, I think yes. one of the big things for me on my healing, well, well there's so many, but one, <laughs> but God knows how many, yeah. being able to not judge myself and just to go, wow, yeah. that's really interesting that you did that. And to then try to unravel the why. Yeah. And the why behind the why. It's yeah. just, yeah. oh. Woo! Yeah. And just to be, right? Like, in, yeah. and, you know, and, to, and you don't need to like go out in the middle of a shopping center and go like, this is who I am in my messiness, right? You know, yeah. it's create a container for yourself. Yeah. Create a safe container for yourself where you can be completely unedited. Yeah. Unhibited. You know, you can, yeah. yeah, you can fumble your way through it. You can be really awkward. You can be really self-conscious. You can be really ugly. You can be really messy. Yeah. Full permission but yeah. you're in a safe container and then you become good at that and then you can then, it starts to ripple out into the world, into every single area. But us thinking that, okay, like this happening over here, like how we do one thing is how we do everything, mm. you know, and so we need to be across all of it, right? 
but we can do it at a speed that feels really aligned to us and in in aligned in congruence yeah. with our capacity and our yeah. nervous system, right? So it's just about this yeah. gradual burn, right? We want this big thing where everything just goes away, but just getting uncomfortable with just it being this gradual thing that happens. With the magic. That's, yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's sustainable, right? It needs to be sustainable. Yes, yes. I love that. Sister. And that's the thing that everyone tries to get from here to here in two seconds. And when they think they're here, they're okay. No, yeah. believe me, yeah. there's so much more and it's never going to stop. So just enjoy yeah. the fucking ride and be here. Yeah, yeah. totally. I love it. Yeah. Oh, it was gorgeous. I loved it. Oh, my God, I don't want this to end. Can we keep talking? <laughs> I think we're going to have to do another one on the other subject. Yeah, oh, my God, yeah. that is just yeah. like. Oh, yeah, juicy. Awesome. Juicy, juicy. Mm. Oh, so what is one bit of thing that you'd like to say to, to the people that are listening to this? <sighs> broad subject, broad question, but what just pops yeah. into your mind? The queen of intuitive intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> I want to say that you matter, Mm. that you are exactly where you are meant to be. And although it might be hard right now, everything is happening for your evolution and you may not see the full picture, but you just need to take one step and then the next step will be revealed and then the next one and then the next one and the next one. And that is all you ever have to do. Oh, a fucking men. Amen. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I love that. So true. Mm-hmm. Oh, can we keep talking? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Clearly, I want him to love this. <laughs> oh, Renee, that was gorgeous. So beautiful. It's just echoing so much that's uh, just so much from what my, my thoughts and, and you know about different things and hearing it from your beautiful channel and your perspective was just gorgeous mm. gorgeous I took thank so you. much in. thank you so much for sharing your wisdom it was mm. amazing and your journey thank you uh, I cannot wait to see what <laughs> our next one's going to be like because there is going to be a next one <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. All right, beautiful. Thank you guys for tuning in and sending you all so much love. Mm. Thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. Make sure to check out all the show notes of today's episode on my website by clicking on the link in the description. Also, make sure to join my newsletter to receive a free guided meditation to help you feel grounded throughout your day. Finally, make sure to subscribe to my channel and help us grow the community by sharing it with your friends. I am your host, Lisa Nadler, and this is The Art of Quantum Healing.